Hello everyone, welcome to our new video. If you have ever wondered about the layout of the keyboard and why the keys are arranged as QWERTY and not alphabetically, then watch this video till the end. The rise of the industrial age to the office age closely aligns with the rise of the typewriter. We use keyboards on various devices. The word keyboard no longer brings to mind the conventional and bulky ones of the 20th century. Now, many devices have keyboards that are not limited by keys. You can simply tap the on-screen keyboard to enter data. No matter which kind of keyboard you're using, the letters are always arranged a certain way. The typewriter's history predates the QWERTY layout. The first typewriter was manufactured in 1874 by Remington and Sons, and it was designed by Christopher Latham Schultz, with Samuel Soule, James Densmore, and Carlos Glidden, and applied for a patent in 1868. He arranged the keys of the typewriter in the QWERTY format, and even today the format remains the same. Nobody knew then that this was going to become the standard world over. Initially, Schultz arranged the keys alphabetically, and as it was inefficient, it failed as it resulted in jamming of the keys which hindered the operation of the typewriter. Schultz then struggled for five years to invent the QWERTY model. You might wonder why it is called QWERTY. The answer lies in the keyboard itself. Take a look at the third row of keys from where the alphabets begin. You will realize that the six letters consecutively placed are Q, W, E, R, T, and Y and this led to it being called QWERTY. QWERTY layout was a compromise between the mechanical needs of the typewriter and the needs of the typist to have common letters under the important fingers. After all, anyone who has ever used a keyboard would know immediately where to find each letter, and time will not be wasted searching for letters. Jamming was a bug that dogged earlier designs, and this has been successfully evaded by keeping common letter pairs apart. Despite its popularity, the truth is QWERTY is not the only type of keyboard. With each language, the layout changes. While in German it is known as the Quartz, in French it goes by Azurdi. These names merely represent the order in which the alphabets are laid out. There is one other layout, however, that over the decades has had a small amount of traction and induced many a flame war on the interwebs. Often touted as superior to the QWERTY for many reasons the Dvorak layout. In 1936, August Dvorak invented a different layout for the keyboards, which is known as Dvorak. He solved the pitfalls of the QWERTY layout by merely rearranging the keys. But the Dvorak keyboards are not very popular and only a small fraction of people know about it. It is designed so that the middle row of keys includes the most common letters. In addition, common letter combinations are positioned in such a way that they can be typed quickly. It has been estimated that in an average 8-hour day, a typist's hands travel 16 miles on a QWERTY keyboard, but only 1 mile on a Dvorak keyboard. The Dvorak layout places all of the most commonly used letters in the home row, so your fingers don't have to move at all to hit these keys. Despite these numerous advantages, there are some disadvantages that have been neglected due to its popularity and utility. QWERTY keyboard was not made to be ergonomic. It has a high same-finger ratio, which increases the strain. If you type constantly on the QWERTY keyboard, your chances of developing carpal tunnel syndrome are higher. The distance you have to cover to stretch for certain keys is also higher than on the Dvorak, causing more strain to your hand. QWERTY places letters that are rarely used in the most optimal positions while your fingers need to stretch for the keys you use all the time. Also, in certain cases, the lengthy words need to be typed with the same hand, and it often moves from the home row. This decreases the speed and efficiency of the user. The Dvorak keyboard was designed to prevent errors while typing. For example, the most common errors that occur while typing the word the are TH or HET. This is mainly because the keys alternate badly in the QWERTY keyboard, causing you to type outward rather than inward. The QWERTY keyboards are preferred because they prevent the excessive speed of typing, which in turn prevents the jamming of keys and regular malfunction of the computer. People prefer this keyboard as they have been exposed to it longer. Also, most of the shortcut commands like cut, copy and paste have been designed based on this layout. In the Dvorak keyboard, you will notice that these shortcut keys are not quite accessible. Many programming languages use a lot of symbols, like brackets, braces, and semicolons, many of which are in awkward positions in Dvorak. 
The left hand covers all of the vowels and some consonants, and the right hand covers only the remaining consonants. There are very few words in the English language that can be typed with only one hand on the Dwarja keyboard. Also, since the typewriters are designed QWERTY, our fingers are used to this design. The pattern is etched into our muscle memory, making it difficult to forget and adapt to other keyboards. The result will be similar when expecting a right-handed person to write with their left. Finally, the QWERTY keyboards have been tweaked to be used for other languages, while the other keyboards are available only in English. The fate of the keyboard was decided in 1893 when the five largest typewriter manufacturers, Remington, Calligraph, Yoast, Densmore and Smith Premier, merged to form the Union Typewriter Company and agreed to adopt QWERTY as the de facto standard that we know and love today. Remington didn't just produce typewriters, they also provided training, for a small fee of course. Typists who learned on their proprietary system would have to stay loyal to the brand, so companies that wanted to hire trained typists had to stock their desks with Remington typewriters. The real reason for its stubborn persistence is inertia. Imagine the cost of designing, testing and manufacturing an alternative, and then retraining billions of people to use it. So it is obvious that QWERTY is going to stick around for a long time despite its disadvantages and shortcomings. We hope you liked our video. Please subscribe to our channel and tap the bell icon to receive notifications from us. We will see you soon in the next video.